Hello, class. I'm glad to see you again. Um, although I'm not really again looking at you, I'm looking at myself, but uh, hopefully I, you'll be watching this at some time. We're going to talk about political parties today. Uh, parties are questionable what they are because the term is a little undefined in America. In Europe, you have parties which are very well organized and literally card carrying parties, you know, where people are, are members, officially members and given cards and the whole bit. Here in the United States, you know, you can say you're a member of a party because you're registered with a party. But you can change that overnight easily. Party has little old control over that or little influence on you. You also have organizations, you have county organizations for each political party, you have state organizations, you have national, you know, the National Republican Committee, National Credit Committee. So most certainly you also have these organizational structures which handle national conventions and things like this. And uh, finally, we have the candidates and the actually officials that uh, are in office or running for office using party labels. And sometimes you wonder if that's the party. And most certainly when you see party positions change drastically when you pick a different candidate. For example, many traditional Republican positions changed drastically when Donald Trump was nominated. You recognize that those who are currently in office um, or even running for office may have a huge impact upon what the party is and what the party stands for. In the American system, we only have two parties. Other countries have multiple parties. The reason we only have two parties is that we have winner take all elections. It means that, uh, you know, if you have a uh, election of any type in America, it's going to be the, whoever gets the majority vote in that particular district. If you are receiving a percentage of vote, but less than the majority, you're basically a loser. You know, if you don't have more than everybody else. If you had a system, for example, in California, where we have 58 uh, counties and you know, 50, about 57 representatives at this time in Congress, and we did it proportionally. In other words, if you voted uh, independent party, they got 10% of the vote. And, they got five or six delegates, that might make a difference. But you know, it doesn't make a difference the way it is because that 10% voting independent will not be heard because they will never carry a majority. This has been traditional for a long time and we don't anticipate that it's going to change significantly. What do our political parties look like? Increasingly, they are less and less willing to compromise. We have found this to be the case uh, over the starting in pretty much about 1990. More and more, you find the parties take more rigid positions. They're less willing to have people in the middle and compromise. And in, it's also reflected in congressional districts as they become also more regionally defined. At one time, we had 150 seats in Congress that could be Republican or Democrat, depending upon how the general atmosphere was in the country. Now there's only maybe 50. A huge difference. It means it's much harder to change things, to swing from one direction to the other. Even small margins are, uh, are significant at this particular time when you actually get to Congress. Now, parties have changed, most certainly geographically. The South used to be Democratic, the North East used to be Republican. Now it's flip-flopped. It used to be that the Republican Party on average had higher income than members of the Democratic Party. That is also flip-flopped, as has educational levels and a variety of things. Parties also change the positions. California, the Republican Party, was the party that supported free college education. I went to use University of California, Berkeley, and other state schools, tuition free, because Earl Warren, a Republican, believed that was a good idea and the Republican Party agreed with him. It was also a Republican that changed that, Ronald Reagan, and started imposing tuition 
on new state colleges and universities, which is what we have today. So most certainly there's no consistency on there, although there's some general consistency of between the two parties. Is change coming? Right now, of course, you're seeing stagnation. You're also seeing something else increasingly as the parties are rigid, more and more people are becoming independents and fewer becoming Democrats or Republicans. The Democrats are under 40% now, the Republicans under 30%. But it also looks like the demographics are suggesting that those independents and Democrats as a group, as a combination of those Democrats are lean democratic, uh, are increasing. We find minority groups tend to vote more democratic. We find young people tend to vote more democratic. And the long-term suggestion and trend looks like we're gonna see Texas and Arizona and Georgia do the same thing that's already happened in Colorado and New Mexico, go from being Republican to purple, which means one or the other, and finally ended up being blue states or Democratic. This is possible. We've had major revolutions in the past. We had one at the Civil War, where the Democratic Party used to be the dominant party, and then after the Civil War, the Republican Party emerged as the dominant party. We had one in 1932 when the Republicans didn't seem to be responding very well to the effects of the Great Depression. And Franklin Roosevelt came in and the Democratic Party became the dominant party. And most certainly, as I've said, we have seen changes since the 1970s. I don't believe that we're going to end up with a California type United States where one party, the Democratic Party dominates. I believe what's gonna happen is that Party entrepreneurs, people, you know, people don't like losing. And one reason people run for office is to win. And as the demographics change, I anticipate there will be changes for the Republican Party to accommodate that change to make them more successful in long-term elections. Now, short-term, it may be different, but long-term, I expect these changes to occur. And of course, as they occur, you will see also changes occurring within the Democratic Party. Understand what parties do. Parties make it possible for people who are similar in their opinions, similar enough that they can coalesce as a group to offer a platform. And then the one platform can contest against the other. And this makes it easy to come to decision-making for people, they can see two options. If you just have a variety of, you know, undefined options for each candidate or people who aren't lining up in some fashion, it's very, very hard to choose one versus the other. Parties help inform us what the issues are. They help us define what positions are on them. And they give us a way of saying, I like this one, or I don't like that one. Now, the negative of parties, of course, is that you become a party member and you just echo party positions because you're a party member, not because parties represent your values. It's just because, hey, I've always been a Democrat. Therefore, I will always just take positions of the Democrats. This is a time for us to take a hard look at it, ask our parties to be responsive so that we can get things done. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Goodbye.